Moon Knight issue number eight. So we're in the midst of Devil's Reign. And with Devil's Reign means Mark Spector's kind of tied up for a minute. He's got his own issue coming out, Moon Knight, Devil's Reign. It's a tie-in. Mark gets out of prison. We know it's coming. We don't have to talk about it. Because this issue, it spends no time with Mark. Mark does not appear in this issue. None of the Moon Knight personas appear in this issue. Well, none of the Mark Spector adjacent personas of Moon Knight do. Instead, Dr. Badir takes over the title role for a minute. He's going to be Hunter's Moon. It's a Hunter's Moon issue. Which could scare some of you. I'm not sure what the public consensus is on Dr. Badir yet. To me, though, this is a fine addition that works really well. Like a counter identity or like a brotherly figure to the Mark Spector character. Like somebody who is actually good at their job being a Moon Knight character. That's awesome. And I think that works really well. So if you remember issue one of this book, it opens up with Welcome to the Midnight Mission. My name is Mr. Knight. How can I help? This issue opens up very similar to that, except instead of Mark Spector in the Mr. Knight persona, it is Dr. Badir, and he is Dr. Moon, and he's wearing a black suit, the opposite colors of Mark's suit. It's great. Capuccio's artwork shines again. It is gorgeous. It is breathtaking. There is no blue aura around Badir. It's just dark tones and dark colors, which works really well. And as that's happening, we get kind of confirmation where Moon Knight is at this time. So we see like the panel we saw in Devil's Reign number one, where he's fighting the Thunderbolts. So that's what's going on there. And we see that the person that Badir is talking to is none other than Detective Flint. He's no longer a detective, though, but sometimes some weird cases come along to him. And this case has Moon Knight written all over it. So what is this we're looking at? Well, we saw it and I think it was issue seven. There was like a symbol on the side of the wall with an S in it. That's none other than Stained Glass Scarlet. So we're talking about Stained Glass Scarlet again. A character that is used so scaringly and never really comes back. And I have to applaud Jed McKay for being like, no, I'm not going to do like the stupid, you know, like mobster, gangster, terrorist thing with her. It's been done to death. Basically, we'll get into it when we talk about it, but we get the recap for Scarlet Fascinera here, you know, married a gangster, gave birth to another, the cops killed her husband, she killed their son, you get it, she had her whole story there. Basically, we're setting up the idea that the story of Stained Glass Scarlet is so impactful and so powerful that it's just something that people gravitate to. So then we see, we cut back, we still get the narration from Flint here, but we see Badir investigating the symbols and he's walking down the street and we're just like, she supposedly died two years ago. So we know she's dead technically but this is somebody could be copying her motive we saw that with like black specter before where somebody came black specter after studying carson so something here is like what is happening why is the stained glass scarlet story being told over and over again why is it suddenly becoming this big deal why do people know it well we see badir touch the symbol and he's suddenly in this new place there's candles all around him he's like is that you, my angel? Once again, talking to the complicated relationship of Scarlet and Mark, which if you don't know, I'm not going to get into it here. This has nothing to do with Mark Spector in this story, but you might suspect some romantic tendencies because Moon Knight is also a romance comic. So hang on to that when you get to the Sting Ass Starlet stuff in the original run. So there's this voice creeping around everywhere. that's kind of haunting Badir. He's like walking through this weird place and everything's surrounded by candles. He like falls through this floor frame and suddenly everything becomes this like stained glass plating. Beautiful use of colors here. I talked about it like last year a lot when it was like the main colors we saw in comic books were like orange and pink and purple. Great use of that here to go against like the white and the black that is the Hunter's Moon costume. It looks amazing and it's just such a good thing to see. And there's just like this narration overhead. And again, it's kind of this, it's a really, really fascinating idea that if I was writing a Moon Knight comic and somebody said, you're doing stained glass scarlet, I wouldn't have this idea come up. So basically, stained glass scarlet is no longer like the woman Scarlet Fascinera. She is just the embodiment of a story now. The story became so powerful when people like breath breathe the words of the story of Scarlet. Suddenly, it took on this persona of its own and became its own identity and became its own power. So we're basically saying that the story of Stained Glass Scarlet and Scarlet Fascinera birthed this new identity for the Stained Glass Scarlet villain, which is just she's a living story. And when you are a story, you can basically become a god. 
So it's like this magical connotations connected to the character now. And it's just like this big cloak that's attacking Badir and he's fighting through these crossbow arrows. It's not working. We see like the big sweeping page with the cloak on it. And it's like striking down on him in this big fiercing thing. It's really cool. It's a great idea to use with this character because what else do you do with her? Honestly, I don't know. I think the character is kind of fun, but what else do you do? There's not much. So it works really well. And basically she's trying to say like, you are really nothing. You are just some lackey to a God who fobbles and everything he does. You're really nothing. I control everything around us. I can do all of this shit. Look at me encapsulate you in these stained glass pictures. Like you are nothing. And Badir's like, no, I, I know what I am. I'm a fist to conch you, but I'm also human. I can make my, I can change. I can literally do anything I want. Can a story change? You are stuck being one thing. You, you literally cannot change. I can learn and adapt and change everything about me, but you are stuck as this. And we get like the reveal of the actual Scarlet. So instead of like having like a face with like a beautiful woman, it's just like this yellow stained glass encapsulating all around her with four arms. And it's this terrifying like picture of like divinity and this powerful image. It's brilliant. I'm just so impressed. Somebody said we're doing that with stained glass Scarlet. What a cool concept. It's such a cool concept. And it leads to this great idea because he is technically playing with a god now it's a young god and she's not as strong god as like some of the other people in the universe he's like i know how exactly how to fight you because once again badir is capable at his job he knows way more than mark in every situation that is literally what we've built him to be and it makes sense so he's like what for what is a god if not a story and now we like change the playing field he summons his own god and fighting the monstrous stained glass scarlet is none other than the embodiment of Conchu. So Conchu swoops down. He's like, look at this young god. So much of this stuff. Like, look, look at her. She's so fun. Look what my son my son brought me here. Sure, I'm in prison in some place, but, you know, I can, my will and my spirit can come anywhere. And it's like, it's here and look at, look at you. You're the like young god. It's so fun to see you. Stained glass girl lashes out to kill him, but he's like, what do you think you're doing? You're nothing but a story. You're, you're literally nothing. I'm literally a legend. I'm mythology. I am a big freaking story. People know Khonshu. People know me. Like, I am history. You are literally just a new idea that formed itself into a consciousness. So he just beats the crap up out of Stained Glass Scarlet, and it looks amazing. Like, if you were to tell me five years ago we'd get a Moon Knight comic book where a giant-sized Khonshu wrapped up in the bird skull, being summoned by Mark Spector's pseudo-brother called Hunter's Moon, fighting a goddess version in the form of a storybook as Stained Glass Scarlet, I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? This character remains on the streets. He doesn't do anything. Look at this now. This has literally become the standard for this character, and it's honestly amazing. What a cool concept. So, Khonshu breaks her shatters her but of course she is a story she is an idea you can't kill an idea you can just make it hurt you can go to war with an idea but you can't kill it so we see the fight happening we cut back to badir talking to reese and he's just like pushing uh, you know punishing a young god by summoning an ancient one it was very intense to see they have a moment of silence and he tries to apologize for like you know attacking her earlier she's like it's gonna take time but whatever i get it you, you did the thing just let me figure this out on my own, please. And we see, is the, is the story of Stained Glass Scarlet truly gone? Well, of course not. You can never get rid of a story. You can only change its narrative a little bit. So as long as somebody prays or somebody believes in the story of Scarlet Fascinera, the Stained Glass Scarlet goddess in the story will always return. What a cool concept. What a brilliant concept. And that kind of part just ends with seeing the logo still aside on the wall, like the markings there and somebody praying to Stained Glass Scarlet, showing that the story's not really over. This to me is what you would do with a Badir book where it's like, yeah, he's not actually solving the problem. He's just part of it right now where he's like, okay, my brother fought this guy. Okay, this is crazy. Why am I doing this? It's insane. And I am super impressed. The Moon Knight book is so beautiful to look at and so well written. How is it we live in a time where one of the best selling books of 2021 is Moon Knight? That is insane. And it's true. I looked at the results there. It's like in the top 20 best selling titles of last year. How is that possible? 
But that is also not where this book ends because we get an epilogue, much like we did of the last issue. This epilogue, we're going to Ravencroft and somebody broke out of their cell. Who broke out of their cell? Well, I'll tell you who broke out of their cell. Some guy named Rutherford, Rutherford Winner. No idea who this is. I'm going to guess, and this is just a guess, I'm going to say it's a character from a previous Jed McKay book. The way Zodiac was used before and he brought Zodiac back, I'm going to say he probably wrote Rutherford Winter in some book he did before, and now they're coming back. Makes sense to me. That's what I do too, man. But this issue, very strong, very cool. A great use to be a tie-in because it doesn't actually tie into the book. We get one panel showing the Devil's Reign stuff. The rest of it's just like, okay, let's do something with Hunter's Moon. And we're doing something awesome with Hunter's Moon. What a great concept and a great use of the character. Great use of Stained Glass Scarlet. I am just more, I'm more and more impressed every day with what this book does. Because it just subverts my expectations so much where I'm like, no, we're going to have a literal fight between a young god, which is like Scarlet Fasanera, and we're going to have a f fighter with Khonshu. Like, what the hell? How is this How is this a Moon Knight book? It's just doing so much insane stuff and doing these incredibly sweeping pages, and I am just blown away by the work that Jed McKay and Al Alessandro Capuccio are putting into this. Like, you guys, you are doing the lord's work here and rochelle rosenberg doing the co the coloring art the, the colors for this it's beautiful it works so well i will not i i can't like th this is amazing it's just literally amazing that this works and it's cool i'm blown away like i just that design for stained glass scarlet so good it's so perfect oh they're doing it we're, we're getting some we're getting good moon knight in an era where moon knight's gonna be more popular than ever it's amazing to believe, honestly. So Moon Knight, issue number eight, I'm going to give a nine out of ten. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. Face the vengeance of the Moon Knight.